Well, based on the existing studies uh, investigating uh, pulmonary cell rehabilitation, we thought that there were an opening in terms of investigating a fully supervised pulmonary cell rehabilitation and compare it to a fully supervised conventional PR program, as it to our knowledge hasn't been investigated or at least published yet. So we did that, and we did that on uh, uh, patients with COPD who had an severely progressed COPD uh, with an FEV1 less than 50%, and they needed to be eligible for hospital-based outpatient PR, meaning those in Denmark who has the most severe COPD. And we actually also allowed them to be technical naive, meaning they didn't need to have any uh, technical literacy in terms of participating in, in, uh, in our program. So we went with superiority design, and that was actually on a, a simple hypothesis that we expected a higher adherence to the tele-rehab programs in terms of less inconvenience with transport. You could do it from your own home, and thereby there it would be easier to access the program. And thereby a higher adherence, a linear dose response, and thereby a higher effect on our primary endpoint, which was the six months walk distance. So it was a multi-center trial. We included patients from seven hospitals, a total sample of uh, 134 patients, and they were randomized into a conventional program, fully supervised in groups at the local hospital, or they received the tele-rehab at home in front of a real-time screen, also fully supervised and also in group. And our inclusion and exclusion criteria were fully identical with routine practice. And so we were looking for a group change difference of 26 meters between groups to claim superiority. Um, and the main conclusion were that the tele-rehab program was not superior to the conventional program on our primary endpoint. Uh, we did see a high completion rate in the tele-rehab, but it was not statistical on the adherence rate, and thereby our hypothesis of a higher adherence and a higher effect was not confirmed. So the two interventions actually had uh, similar uh, exercise contents in terms of the tele-rehab had a uh, 105 minutes of exercise per week and the conventional group had 120 minutes per week and both group had a group education of 60 minutes per week. Of course the exercise content were slightly different because the conventional were performed at an exercise gym at the hospital while at home they used hand weights and, and step boxes from 1 to, t to 20 kilos. So overall the, the, the exercise content were equal but, but different equipment. The education topics were similar in both groups. Yeah, you know, that's a really great question that I think we would all really know to have the answer to. Because we know even patients who participate in what we will, you know, consider a gold standard uh, precision target uh, PR program. Not even there we can tell who are the responders and who are the non-responders. So we know the majority respond positively from the conventional PR programs, but we also have a high proportion of non-responders. So I don't really have any clear answer to that. Unfortunately, I think we'd all like to have that. In our study, we are of course also looking into exploratory analysis to see if we can find some difference in characteristic between responders and non-responders, but it's, it's really hard to tell at the moment. Yeah, well, as, as I mentioned earlier, we need most uh, randomized controlled trials to have a predefined uh, design in terms of if they're superior, or equivalent, and non-inferior. And I think to be realistic about the tele-rehab, I think we should design equivalence or non-inferior design. I think it's maybe a little too optimistic to, to believe that tele-rehab should be superior to a conventional program. And after all, tele-rehab, in my perspective, is to create access for those who don't have the availability of a conventional program. It's not to create a new super drug. Also, I think that our study actually just add to the growing uh, evidence that that tele-rehab could be a, a secondary solution and it, it is possible to, to create access for those who don't have the availability. And it does in fact appear to be equally safe as a conventional program at the hospital, even in patients with severely progressed CPD. Future research should also focus on which patients, as we talked about earlier, is most suitable for tele-rehab, which tele-model, should it be a fully supervised, maybe a semi-supervised, or should it just be like a web or app-based with e-learning programs, which patients are most suitable for those different tele-rehab models. 
Um, we also need a lot more reporting on the long-term outcomes. I think we are the first study who are reporting on, on a one-year follow-up. From my perspective, all the other progressive studies have that's only one study with a three months follow up and the other only have uh, the, the short term uh, results. So we need long term results as well. And of course, maintenance uh, programs in terms of tele rehab, we need realistic and I mean realistic models in, in terms of sustainable maintenance uh, models for patients with COPD as well.